Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve course schedule two. And if you haven't already seen, I've actually solved the first one, which I recommend watching that video or at least solving that problem before you try to solve this one. It's a little bit more difficult, but it's also very similar. So we are again given n courses labeled from zero to n minus one. And these are basically gonna be the nodes in our graphs. So this is a graph problem. And again, some courses have prerequisites. So course A has a prerequisite of course B. And what that means is you have to take course B before you take course A. So that's pretty intuitive, right? And so instead of knowing if we can take every single course in this problem, we want to know for all of the courses and all of the prerequisites that were given, we want to return the order of courses that we would take in order to finish all the courses. So we care about the order, but there's one little subtlety. It's possible that we can't take all courses given the prerequisites. So if it's not possible, we have to return an empty array. So we have to, we have to determine if it's even possible, and then we have to return the order. So this example is pretty simple. We're given two courses, zero and one, and the prerequisite is, so in order to take course one, we have to first take course zero. So then in that case, what's the order? Of course, we have to take zero first and then course one. So the output is gonna be zero one which is exactly what we have over here. Now, what if I added one more prerequisite? So what if I said, okay, to take course zero, we are required to take course one as well. What does that mean? That means, okay, the first prereq tells us that to take course one, we have to take course zero. And the second one tells us to take course zero, we have to take course one. Now, look at this. Is it possible to take these courses? It's not. To take course zero, we have to take course one. To take course one, we have to take course zero. There's no valid order, so we return an empty array. And we know to return an empty array because we have a cycle in this graph, right? There's a cycle that tells us that it's not possible. So now let's actually look at the general algorithm for it. And it's actually topological sort. This is a standard graph algorithm, but you actually don't even need to know what this algorithm is when you solve this problem. This problem actually teaches you what topological sort is. So similar to course schedule one, what we're going to do is starting at every single node, we're going to run depth first search on the node. So let's start at node zero. Let's run depth first search on it. To do that, we would, before we do that, we would need to build an adjacency list. So for each node, we would need to know its neighbors. So for course zero, we would need its neighbors, which are gonna be one and two. Basically it's prerequisites, right? That's gonna be the prereq map. So it's an adjacency list. So I'm just gonna quickly write that down. So now we have our prereq map, right? It tells us for each node, what are the prerequisites? So zero, right, has two prerequisites, one and two, because it has two outgoing edges to one and two. One has a single prerequisite, three. Two has no prerequisites, right? Because look, it has two incoming edges, but it does not have any outgoing edges, so it does not have any prerequisites. Three has a single prerequisite of two. Four has a single prerequisite of zero, and five also has a single prerequisite of zero. And so we are gonna build the output. We're gonna do depth first search, starting at every single node. And remember the output we're trying to build is the order in which we can take courses. So just by looking at it, you can tell, okay, zero has two prerequisites, one and two. So of course, we're gonna need to take one and two before we end up taking zero. But let me show you the algorithm. So let's start at zero. We don't update our output yet. We wanna take the prerequisites first. So let's go to one of the prerequisites by which we can tell from our prereq map. So we're gonna be at node one right now. And one has a single prerequisite three. So we're gonna to need to take the prereq before we can take course three. And now we see three has a prereq of two, a single prereq. So all we have to do is take course two before we take three. So now we are at course two and 
lovely that it does not have any prerequisites. What does that mean for us? So, so far we've taken a path. We've gone from zero to one to three, all the way to two, and now we don't have any more prereqs. So we are allowed to take course two, right? It does not have any prereqs. We can add it to our output. So I'm gonna add a two to our output. And so what I'm gonna do now is cross out two because we never have to visit it again because once we've added two to our output, we don't wanna add two twice, right? There's no need to add a course to our output twice. So I'm gonna cross it out so we are never going to visit this node again. And now I'm gonna, in our depth first search, I'm gonna go back to where we came from. We came from this three. So now that three, look, it does not, Three does not have any more prereqs, right? We've already visited two. It doesn't have any more prereqs. So we can also cross it out. We never have to visit it again. And we add it to our output. And I'm just gonna repeat this process all the way along our green path that we just went along. So we're gonna go back to one. One, we just visited three. We are never gonna visit it. And one has no prerequisites anymore, so we can add this to our output. And we go all the way back to zero. Now, hold on a second. So look, zero has two prerequisites, one, and we already visited one, but it has one more prereq, two. So let's go to two, but we see, right, we already visited it. We don't have to do it again. We can cross this out. We can cross this out. So in reality, zero does not have any prerequisites remaining. So what do we do? We add zero to our output. Now in reality, our, our algorithm is gonna say, okay, we ran depth first search on zero. So now we're gonna run depth first search on one, but we know that we already did that, right? We already recursively did that, so we don't have to do it. And actually before I forget, since we added zero to our output, let's cross it out. So we ran depth first search on zero, we're gonna try to run depth first search on one, but we know we already did that. We're gonna try to run depth first search on two, but we know that we already did that. We're gonna try to run depth first search on three, but we know that we already did that. So now we're gonna try to run depth first search on four, which we haven't visited yet. And let's just use our common sense. From just looking at the graph, we can see that, okay, we need to take these courses in this order, two, three, one, zero. What about four and five? Technically, they both have a single prerequisite of zero, right? So once we take zero, we can take four and five, but we can do it in any order, right? We can take four, five, or we can take five, four. It doesn't matter because these courses aren't a prerequisite of each other. But the way our algorithm is gonna work, we are gonna start in order. So we're gonna go at four. We're gonna see it has a single prerequisite of zero, right? We can see that in our prereq map. And we know, we know that we already took course two, so we can also say, okay, course four has also been taken. We've done the prerequisites, we can take course four. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with five now. We're gonna try to see, okay, it has a single prereq, zero. We've already done that. So now we're allowed to take course five. So this is the topological sort of this graph. And we know that the topological sort is not necessarily unique, right? Like this could have been a five and a four. So it's not unique. And we also know that if we detect any cycles, we have to return an empty list because, because that means that a topological sort is not even possible. And by the way, since we are visiting every single node and every single vertex, or rather every single edge, right? We have to travel along every single edge, I think at least twice. And we're probably gonna visit every single node up to two times. So it is going to be a, so the time complexity is going to be the number of edges plus the number of vertices. Or by vertices, we also mean nodes. So we could also write this as O of P, where P is the number of prerequisites, which is actually the number of edges, and plus N, where N is the number of courses, which is also equal to the number of vertices. And one last thing, how would we actually detect a cycle, like with our algorithm? Well, well let's say we had a cycle. So let's say two actually did have an outgoing node and it had a node all the way to zero. 
In that case, what our algorithm would do is, okay, we're starting at zero, we're going to go to one just like we did previously, then we're going to go to three just like we did previously, then we're going to go to two just like we did previously, and then lastly, starting at two, we're going to go to its only outgoing edge, which is at zero. And at that point, what our algorithm is going to do is it's going to see, okay, we started at zero, we remember that, this is the path that we've taken, we went all the way around and we landed back at zero. So this means we have a cycle. That means we stop our algorithm immediately and return an empty list. We do not have to continue. And the way I'm gonna handle this is I'm gonna use a hash set and with that hash set, I'm going to basically remember our current path so we, rem we know we can recognize when we detect a cycle. So now let me actually show you the code. Okay, so now let's write the code. The first thing we wanna do is build an adjacency list with the prereq, so I'm going to do that prereq. And in some Python, what I'm gonna initially do is for every course, I'm gonna map it to an empty list. So initially, it's going to be a empty list of prerequisites. And now I'm actually gonna fill it in. So we're gonna iterate through every single course prereq pair in our prerequisites list that we're given. So for this pair in our prerequisites list, I'm going to say prereq of this course. Let's add that to our list, so append it to our list. And this might not have been clear from my picture, but a course has three possible states. One, where it's already visited, right? That's where I crossed it out in red. It's already been added to the output. It's been visited. We do not have to ever consider it again. The next state is visiting right so it's currently being visited that's the green path and that's what's going to allow us to detect if we have a cycle and the last is unvisited meaning a course has not been added to the output and it's not currently along the uh, the visited path so that's that's pretty self-explanatory so I'm going to obviously create an output list, which is gonna be empty. I'm also gonna have two sets, one visit set and one cycle set. So these sets are gonna allow us to know if a node or course has already been visited or if it's currently along the given path, which this is the cycle is obviously gonna let us know, is gonna help us detect cycles. Now I'm going to define our depth for search function. Um, as you can see, I'm doing it inside of another function, basically, so I don't have to pass all these parameters into this, and all of these variables will be accessible inside this function. So the only thing I have to pass in is the course number that we're currently visiting. So the first thing I want to do is detect a cycle. So if this course is already inside of our cycle set, that means we're visiting it twice. That means we've detected a cycle. That means we're going to return false, and then we're going to be able to terminate our algorithm and return an empty list. If a course has already been visited, that basically means we don't need to visit it twice. So I'm gonna return true. We're not gonna you know, stop our algorithm and return an empty list, but we're, we don't need to visit this course twice. Now I'm gonna recursively run depth first search, but before we do that, we do have to add this course to our cycle. We wanna be able to know if we have a cycle. So if we ever see this course again, you know, recursively, we'll know that we detected a cycle. But for now, we're going to go through every prerequisite of this course. So from our prerequisite map, we're going to get all of the prerequisites. We're going to run recursively depth for search on this prerequisite. And if that returns false, because we know we have two return values, true and false. If it returns false, we know we just detected a cycle. So in that case, if this equals false, we have to also return false. If it doesn't equal false, it, it equals true, then we're just going to continue to go through all the prerequisites and continue to run depth for search. And when all of that is said and done, we will take from our cycle, we're going to remove the course because it's no longer along the path that we're going. So we can remove it from cycle. We can also add it to visit because we just went through this course and we went through all of its prerequisites. Therefore, we can say that it's been visited. And since this course has been visited, we can finally add it to our output, which was our ultimate goal. 
So we can add it to our output because we just went through all of its prerequisites and from those prerequisites, we just added them to our output. So now we are allowed to add this course to our output. We can only add a course after we've added its prerequisites, right? And since we added this to our output, we know it's a course we're allowed to take. So we can return true, not false. We're going to return true. Everything was fine. Because since we're returning true, we know that this never executed. So we never had to return false. We ultimately returned true. So now we've basically written all the code that we need. We just have to execute it. So we have to go through every course in the given number of courses and we're going to do it in order but you technically could do it in any order and what we're going to do is run depth first search on every single course but we do have to check if the return value of any of these calls happens to be false what that means is we detected a cycle and what that means is we are forced to return an empty list we're not going to return output we're going to return an empty list because we because it's impossible to take the given courses. But if this never executes, meaning the depth for search never detected a cycle, this will never, this will never execute and the loop will be finished running. And when that happens, we know we can return the output that we spent all our time building and the output will be in the order that we want it to be. So that's the algorithm. Let me delete these comments so you can see the entire code on one page. So this is the entire code. I'm going to run it and show you that it is pretty efficient. Okay, whoops. One little bug. Output is a list. So the function to add elements to a list is actually append. So with that working, hopefully I don't have any other typos. And yes, you can see that this is a very efficient algorithm. This is topological sort, but you might not even recognize that. And there are different ways to write this. So I prefer writing it like this because it's, it keeps things pretty simple, right? We only have two sets. We don't have to remember colors or uh, other ways of solving this problem. But I hope it was helpful. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. And I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.